Good evening. Welcome, everyone. Jay, you can probably um, go ahead and put the slide deck up, too. I sure will. Thank you for letting people in. Thank you all for joining us. We're going to wait just a few minutes before we get started. If you joined us last night, um, this is going to be the same presentation. So um, up to you if you wanna watch it again. Also, we do have the slide deck now posted on our website under the TKK Parent Information Night. So you can go ahead and download the presentation from there. Our presentation will be about an hour long this evening um, and we will be able to um, try to respond to some of your questions in the Q&A um, section at the bottom of the presentation. We'll try to answer some of those live if we can. And um, as you'll see in the presentation, we also have an FAQ document posted on our website where we'll be putting any frequently asked questions um, and answers onto that page. Jay, how are we doing? Are we having more people join us here? We're having a few more. Um, our interpreter is in the panel, is not a panelist, is in the attendees. So I'm trying to help her um, rejoin. Okay, great. Um, can you give me, actually, I think I have it. It's the one in the chat, am I correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Cindy, we're gonna send you a different link. Okay. Thank you everybody for being patient. While I do this, if you wanted to get started, you can, and then I will set that up as we go. I think Patrick said it might be working now. So I, once he, I re-log sign in, then I just start a talk, so that goes through another channel, people can hear me. It is, and for oh. one minute, I'm gonna stop um, sharing because I'm going to add you. I'm uh -huh. so glad you're here with us and we'll explain to our participants how um, they can access the translation. In fact, is it okay if I explain that now? Yes, go okay. right. We have two translators tonight that we're lucky to have. We have translation in Chinese and in Spanish. Um, for our attendees, if you look down at the bottom of your Zoom panel, you'll see a little world with the word interpretation under it. You open up um, that icon and then you can select either Spanish or Chinese, and it puts you in a room where you only hear um, the interpreter. So the interpretation will go on simultaneously. So interpreters, you can actually start interpreting now because um, attendees will get to hear your voice instead of our voice, where you will hear ours though. Thank you so much. All right, Kathleen, I think we are ready to start. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Shay. Um, we'll go ahead and put our presentation back up on the shared screen. And um, good evening again, if you're just joining us. My name is Kathleen Reef. I'm the Director of Student Services for the Pleasanton Unified School District. We're really excited to have you join us this evening. Um, and again, for those of you who are just joining, um, this is the same presentation that we gave last night, and it is posted on our website under the TKK Parent Information Night so if you wanna see the slides um, or reference them later, they are posted on our website. So I am going to um, introduce our Assistant Superintendent of Student Support Services, Mr. Ed Dialazzo. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Good evening, parents and guardians. I have the easiest job tonight, and I'm just here to welcome all of you to the Transitional Kindergarten and Kindergarten Parent Information Night. Uh, we have a lot of really good and important information for all of you. And we have our outstanding staff to present 
uh, multiple slides to hopefully get through the information you need um, in order to register and enroll your children for the 21-22 school year. And believe it or not, we're very excited for the 21-22 school year. Uh, we're planning accordingly. We have a lot to do uh, in preparation for that year, but this is one of the first things that we do. It's really one of the, uh, I really enjoy this meeting. Uh, it's a meeting to, to get to talk to all of you and hopefully meet some of you um, in the fall when you bring your children uh, to register and hopefully to school. So thank you for being here tonight. Uh, we look forward to working with all of you and hopefully this is the first night of many, many nights that you and your children have here in Pleasanton. So um, I understand my audio may be a little um, off tonight. I apologize for that if it sounds a little uh, difficult to hear me, but hopefully you have that information. So thank you again, and we'll get right into the presentation uh, with Ms. Reef, I believe. I throw it back to you. Yeah, thank you so much. And actually, you know, Mr. Dialaza, your, your sound is much better tonight than it was last night. So great, thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. And um, actually, I'll go ahead and introduce uh, Ms. Shay Galetti, our Director of Elementary Education. Go ahead, Shay. All right, hi everyone. Just wanted to let you know that tonight we will be recording um, this. And so it's, it's recorded, you will be able to access it later. And in case you just joined us late, we do have translation available through the Zoom app. Um, once you have logged in, look Below on your Zoom, you'll see the world icon interpretation. You click on that and then you can select either Chinese or Spanish. And all right. Do you want to go back to you, Kathleen, for the questions sure. and answers? Yeah. So um, on our PUSD new student enrollment website, um, you will find a frequently asked questions page or FAQ. And we wanted to share that we will be updating this document um, kind of over the course of the next couple of days. We've put all the questions that we do commonly get um, and provided some answers onto that document. Um, but since we can't be with you live in person um, in a multi-purpose room answering your questions, we did put together an FAQ page. And any questions that we're not able to get to this evening um, through the question and answer or live, um, kind of typing in an answer, we will go ahead and post the questions and answer onto that page as well. Um, so we have uh, the Q&A feature that you can use to post a question. If we have time, we will try our best to answer the questions live. Um, and last night we had um, many people posting kind of personal questions about their own individual child. Um, those questions are really better for us to try to answer or respond to you via email. Um, so try to keep your questions generic and we will answer them or we will try to answer you privately if we can as well. So um, if you have a, a general question, go ahead and put it in the Q&A, um, but hopefully we'll be answering most of your questions tonight as we give our presentation. Okay, go ahead and go to the next slide, Shay. Okay, so a quick overview of our packed agenda for this evening. It does take us pretty much the full hour and um, yesterday we went over by a few minutes. Um, we're gonna give you a quick introduction of our school district. Um, we will have um, Steve McCoy Thompson come and talk to us about our Pleasanton Partners in Education or PPIE Foundation. Um, that part is actually being moved to the end of the agenda tonight um, just because he had another commitment as well. Um, Shay will talk a little bit about what to expect in our TK program and in kindergarten, the types of curriculum and activities your kids can be excited to learn about. Um, then we'll go through the very important enrollment and registration procedures. They can be um, a little uh, uh, cumbersome sometimes, so we want to make sure you understand all of the steps, and they are all posted onto our website as well. Um, Susan Hahn is one of our district nurses. She'll be here to talk about our health services information, including information about immunizations. Um, and if your children have allergies or have some medical um, additional concerns that you want us to know prior to your student starting. Um, we will learn more about our dual immersion program that's offered at Valley View. We'll have our kids club on site and before and after school care program um, information what it typically looks like during a typical year, and then also learn a little bit more about our School Smarts program. So it is a pretty packed agenda. 
Um, and again, we are gonna to try to be able to answer some of your questions live this evening as well. Okay, Shay, you wanna do the first poll for us? Sure will. Um, does 2021-2022 mark the first time you have a child entering the PUSD school system? So it's populating right now. I'll give just a few more seconds and then we will go ahead and publish it. Tonight, we have a great attendance as well. We have 164 with us. And it looks like we're almost at about 75 completion. So I'm gonna end the poll and I'll share the results. So it looks like 59% of our participants tonight, this is the first time they're entering PUSD where 41% have another child already entering. So welcome new families. And we're glad to, for those who are already here, we're glad we're having your um, second, third or fourth or maybe fifth child joining us as well. All right, we will go ahead and move to the next slide. Yeah, thank you so much for completing our poll. It really helps us kind of tailor our presentation a little bit more too and um, know kind of who's in this virtual room with us. Um, so just real briefly, um, this is a picture of our uh, strategic plan within Pleasanton Unified. Um, your students will see these in their classrooms and hanging up um, around school and on our campuses um, because our mission is that we want our students to make a better world. And in our vision, we talk about wanting every student to be a resourceful, resilient, responsible, and engaged world citizen. So everything that we do, we try to align to our pillars here and our mission, vision, and belief statements. So within Pleasanton Sorry. Unified, it's okay. Within Pleasanton Unified, we have nine elementary schools, three middle schools, two comprehensive high schools and one alternative ed high school. We also offer an adult education program. We have the Horizon Early Education Child Care Center, which is on our um, high school campus over at Village High School. We have our STEAM preschool, which is also over on the district campus um, over off Bernal. And again, we have our kids club program that you'll be hearing more about a little bit later this evening. And we also have our Harvest Park Preschool and iPals program. So during a typical year, we serve about 15,000 students in grades TK through 12. And we want to assure you that we have outstanding programs and staff at all of our school sites. Um, so no matter what school your student attends, you should have a great experience. Okay, so if you're new to Pleasanton, um, these are the names of the the nine elementary school sites. We have Alisal, Donlin, Fairlands, Hurst, Lydixon, Moore, Valley View, Vintage Hills, and Walnut Grove. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this, uh, but we have a program called Transitional Kindergarten or often referred to as TK. And the, uh, the programs we have for that for that program, we have eight of them. Um, they are at every single site except for Donlin. Um, Donlin is our most impacted school, but that does vary from year to year depending on enrollment. And so it's really important for us um, after this evening to kind of get a snapshot of who will be coming to register and enroll in um, PUSD for the following school year. So we base all of our staffing decisions off of um, the number of students that we have planning to attend for next year. So sometimes we have seven classes, sometimes we have eight for the TK program. Okay, for middle and high school, we have Harvest Park Middle School, Pleasanton Middle School, Hart Middle School, Amador Valley High School, Foothill High School, and also Village High School as our alternative ed program. So every student has what we refer to as a resident school or your home school. And what we mean by this is that um, depending on where you live, you live within a school district boundary that has an assigned elementary, middle and high school. So if you're not quite sure which school is your home school or which school would be your resident school, the first thing you're gonna need to do is figure that out. <laughs> So we have a school locator. It's on our district website. If you go to pleasantonusd.net, visit the enroll tab and then new student enrollment, 
you'll click the PUSD School Locator button. And on that screen, you'll be able to type in your address and it'll pop up what your assigned elementary, middle and high school sites will be. So I think we have our next poll. Okay, we're gonna oh. go over to- Do we have our next poll? For some reason it may have- I thought we did. I thought we were gonna do a poll on which is our homeschool, but- I think that might be coming a little later. Hopefully, okay. we'll I see. I skipped ahead. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna turn it back over to Shay. Um, while you think about your homeschool, and she's going to tell you more about what to expect in TK and kindergarten. Great, thank you. So transitional kindergarten is for students with birthdays on or between September 2nd and December 2nd. It is the first part of a two-year kinder program, program for students within these birth dates. Um, kindergarten students must be five years old on or before September 1st. Um, in addition, our kindergartens are half day programs, um, which means students go um, in the morning to school, usually from about 8.15 to about 11.40. Um, your principal and administration in school, once you enroll, will give you the specific times. I just wanted to cover that because that was a question that came up in the Q&A. The next three slides, what I've done is created slides that are interactive. And so if you go to the website to download the site, the um, slides, you'll be able to see all of the different curriculum for both TK and K. So to walk you through the slide, here we have our handwriting curriculum for TK, and it's a link that takes you to handwriting without tears. Ready to advance is our English language arts and math program. And again, this is also a link. Komochi's is our social and emotional learning program for TK. And Twig Science is our brand new science program that was adopted last year. This icon where you see the transitional kindergarten information is a snapshot of what a typical day in a kinder TK would look like. Now, as we move to kindergarten, we follow the Common Core um, state standards for California. And you'll see it's the same format as the TK in that each of these icons have links so that you could further explore the curriculum. Eureka Math is our adopted math program. For English language arts, we have two programs, Units of Study and Benchmark Advanced. Both um, Benchmark Advanced includes our English language development program. And it also includes our Spanish dual immersion um, curriculum for ELA. Second step is our social and emotional curriculum for kindergarten and actually first through fifth as well. And Twig Science, again, our newly adopted science curriculum. Um, it's also important to note that before your child starts school, um, if you're new to the school system, there's something that's called back to school night. This year we held them virtually like we're doing this meeting. Um, next year, depending on health guidance, will depend on if it's virtual or in person. But at that night, you actually will get to hear from your child's own teacher and they will go in depth on the academic program and routines specific to your kindergarten in classroom. Now we know that this year's preschool may have been very different for many of your children. So this next slide we co um, collected um, resources for you to help prepare your child for the start of school. Um, the one at the left, Get Ready to Read Activities, is a whole list of activities that promote reading and it's shared reading between family members, older siblings, um, and the child. The middle icon is A to Z kindergarten readiness skills. These are skills that help a child be successful when starting kindergarten. And they're skills that you can actually start to work on now with your child. The last icon, Countdown to School Activities, is actually to be done one month before school starts. These are fun activities that you can do to count down and help reduce the stress and build the excitement before starting school in August. There is one other thing that I wanted to talk about, and that was the kindergarten visits. Um, normally, every spring, we have something called kindergarten visits. Once enrollment happens, you are enrolled at your school. The school invites you to what is called a kindergarten 
visit. It's for both the parent guardian and the child. Um, what happens at the kindergarten visits is the child gets to see the classroom and become familiar with it and meet a couple of the teachers. And the parent and guardian is able to listen to the kindergarten teachers and they get some helpful tips about starting the school year. This year that may be done virtually, um, but more information will be sent to you once you enroll into school. All right, back to you, Kathleen, for additional programs to support students. Thank you so much, Shay. Um, and thank you also for explaining um, those visits as well. Okay, so we have um, some additional programs that we just wanna make you aware of. You may or may not need them now, but maybe in the future, or you will know a friend um, that maybe this information could benefit. And so we just wanna make sure that you're aware of it and kind of where you can find additional information about this. So. Um, we support all students in special education or with 504 plans if they need some additional accommodations to be successful in school. Um, so if you feel like your student is starting to struggle or isn't keeping up, um, please reach out to your school site teacher and your administrator or counselor and they can help put together meetings to support your student. Um, so you always want to kind of start with your teacher first and um, participate in some of those meetings that Shay was talking about, the back to school nights, parent teacher conferences, um, and get more information about your student. Um, and there are additional interventions and other steps we can put into place to try to help support your child. Um, we also participate in the Tri Valley SELPA um, for our uh, special education students. Um, we have foster care, kinship, youth, and McKinney Vento supports. So if um, you're supporting a student, maybe you're a grandparent or um, an aunt and, or uncle taking care of a family member, uh, Miss Brenda Montgomery is our foster, um, is our youth development specialist, and she helps support the needs of our foster and kinship families. Um, she offers monthly support groups and a wide variety of other services for students. Uh, McKinney Vento is support services for students who may be experiencing homelessness, um, particularly with COVID-19. We've seen an increase of students needing additional support, families doubling up or tripling up and living with others. Um, so if this um, is impacting your family, there might be some additional supports that we can help you with. Um, so please visit our website. Um, one of our school social workers, Noemi Almaraz, is our McKinney Vento liaison and she can help connect you with some additional resources. Um, we also have our um, district health uh, services program. So our district nurses and our health services assistants um, that you'll be learning a little bit more about um, from Susan Hahn as we get later on into the presentation. We also support PBIS, which is Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports for students. We try to make our schools safe places to learn, and we do that by creating um, safe school environments for them. So we teach school-wide expectations, positively reinforce students when they're doing the right thing. And we also, as Shay mentioned, try to teach social emotional learning skills, conflict resolution, how to solve problems, um, and we also are integrating some restorative practices into our student discipline. So we also have child welfare and attendance liaisons. If your student starts to struggle, struggle with um, attending school, um, we have three different staff who may be reaching out to you um, to offer support or um, other ideas, kind of depending on your unique situation and needs. Um, and the see something, say something, do something talks about our emergency preparedness and district safety efforts. We have more information about that on our school site um, websites as well. So those are just some additional programs to support our students. Um, lots more information on our website. And we will move on to poll number two. Um, based on that information that Shay shared, the birth dates of the TK program being September 2nd through December 2nd, or kindergarten turning five before September 1st. Where do you think your child will be entering TK or kinder? The poll is live. And kind of while you're taking this poll, uh, we do get a question every year about um, for students who are pretty close to that birth date cutoff, if we offer any exceptions into the entry for the TK program or the kindergarten program. 
And we will review those on a case by case basis. Um, we do have a form that we ask you to fill in um, and it is also based on space. So if you are wanting us to consider you for an exception to entry based on those dates, um, please email Shay and myself and we can send you the form. Okay, Shay, you wanna close the poll? And here are the results. All right, so it looks like 14% will be going into the TK program and about 86% or 109 into the kindergarten program. So it's great to hear. All right, and I'll move to the next slide. Okay, we're moving on to enrollment and registration. So enrollment and registration is sort of a two part process. And these are the next steps that we're gonna ask you to take following this meeting. So before attending school in Pleasanton Unified, your student must be enrolled. So what you will do is you will go onto our website and we're gonna go over these steps in a little bit more detail. Um, and you're gonna provide us with some, with some additional information about your student and your family. Um, we are also going to need to see your two proofs of residency and that will be submitted as part of your complete packet. So we're gonna ask you to do this before the end of February if possible. Um, especially if you want to be included in any potential lotteries if your school site is impacted. Um, and then our school site will confirm that they've received your packet and that you're ready for next year. But then again, every year after that, so moving forward this coming August and then every August after, um, you will have to complete an annual registration process. And in that process, we ask you to update your emergency contact information, any changes to your residency. Um, we wanna make sure we have all of your information up to date. Um, so that will happen every single year. So should I think we go to the next slide now? Okay, so here are the next steps and we tried to put them into kind of a timeline chart. So following this meeting, sometime in the next week or two, we want you to go to our online pre-enrollment um, form and it is on that new student enrollment tab on our district website, pleasantonusd.net. You'll enter your student's name and address into the pre-enrollment webpage and follow the directions in that section. Then in step two, you're going to use the checklist that's linked into this document and post it on our website and bring in all of those documents or gather all those documents together. And beginning February 11th, um, the school sites at your elementary sites will have drop boxes placed right outside their offices, their main office that you can drop in all of your documents. In case you prefer to email these, you can also do that as well. Um, our staff do prefer, most of them are preferring to have the complete packet dropped off. But if you want to email them, um, we set up some separate email accounts this year. For example, at Alisal, it's called Alisal Enroll at PleasantonUSD.net. Every school site has one. Um, and those are posted on our website in the steps um, that are outlined there. So you can also email it. So you can drop it in the Dropbox or you can email this packet. Then the school site will go through all of your papers, make sure they have everything and that you're all set for next year. And they'll send you an email confirmation back or let you know that you're all set. That's when step four, we want to make sure that you are watching uh, your school website, looking for that information to come to you about the potential kindergarten and TK visits. We'll see what that will look like. Um, and then getting more information about that registration, annual registration process in August. Then in August, you'll attend the first day of school. Um, it's a very exciting time to have your little one go off to TK or kindergarten for the first time. Um, so we think the first day of school will be right around August 10th. We actually haven't finalized our calendar for next year. Um, it will be posted onto our district website once it's available. Um, so I think that should happen in the next couple of weeks. This year, I believe it was August 11th. It'll probably be around the same time next year. So just bookmark that on your calendars. Okay, so here's those two links we were just talking about, the new student enrollment page. That's where you're gonna follow the steps to complete the enrollment packet. And again, we have that frequently asked questions page. And if you still have questions and you wanna to talk to someone, all of our school sites have staff there. You can email them or call them 
or you can also contact our student services office and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have about enrollment. Okay, so we're asking you, as I mentioned, to complete this if possible by Friday, February 26th. Um, that way, if we need to run lotteries, and what that means is if there are more students who um, apply or want to enroll at a particular site, then we have spaces available at that site, we'll have to run a lottery. Um, typically, our schools in North Pleasanton are the ones that are a little bit more impacted. So that would be Donlin or Fairlands, maybe Lydixon sometimes. Um, so just depending on the number of students that enroll, we may have to run a lottery. And we wanna run that lottery um, that kind of at that first beginning of March. And then anyone that comes to register after February 26 will be placed on a first come first serve basis. So we wanna make sure we get as many um, parents to come in and complete that process um, as soon as possible. And if a school does not have a space, so let's say at Donlin, we have um, more students than we have spaces available, we'll place you at another resident school. And we really do try to place you at a school that's very close when that's possible. Um, and we put you on a waiting list to be able to come back to your home school if a space does open up. So with that said, also, if you get into your resident school and then maybe you move or change your plans, if you could also let us know that um, it helps us kind of move through that list if there is a wait list um, for other students before August as well. So final reminder, when you drop off your packet or submit it via email, please remember to include your child's copy of the birth certificate or copy of the passport and your immunization records and your two proofs of residency. Susan Hahn will talk about this later, but we do need immunization records um, translated into English if they aren't already in English. Um, and again, we just want copies of those documents, not, not the originals. Okay, and uh, the other step that we have is an open enrollment process. So let's say you're, you don't want to attend uh, your school that you kind of live in that area of, and you'd like to open enroll to apply to go to another school site, you can do so by filling in an open enrollment form. So that form is available on our website. Go ahead and complete that form, put it with your packet and drop it off at your resident site. They will then send all those forms to us. So you can just drop off your packet, they'll get you input into the system and then we will review them. And we accept students on a space available basis. So once we have all of the resident students placed, then we can look at those open enrollments. So maybe you have a sibling, an older brother or sister that's already going to another school site. Maybe they were already overflowed there and you want your incoming kindergarten student to go to that same school, please submit that open enrollment and we will try to our best to keep families together whenever possible. Okay, Shay, next slide. Okay, so here are those same steps that we talked about. You're gonna to put together this packet, the pre-enrollment summary. We're gonna print that out and sign it. You have a, this uh, PUSD enrollment form form number 50750, you'll click on that link, it's fillable, um, a copy of that birth certificate or passport so we can confirm age, immunization records translated into English, and your two proofs of residency. Then on the right hand side of this slide, you can see what types of documents we accept as proofs of residency. Um, and again, all of this information is posted on our website, the checklist is linked, and you can actually kind of check it off as you put your packet together. Um, also, if you happen to have older students or you're moving into Pleasanton um, and they've already been to school, please submit um, your latest report card or your transcript or an IEP or 504 if you have those as well. Okay, so moving. So what if I'm planning on moving to Pleasanton soon? Maybe you haven't quite moved in yet. We do need to wait to receive your information until you have completely moved in and you have your two proofs of residency. Unfortunately, we can't process your enrollment until um, we have all of those documents. And then again, if you're planning on moving out at some point or if that happens over the course of your time here in Pleasanton, um, we want you to go ahead and notify your school site staff as soon as you know. 
Um, there is a collection and checkout process at each school site that includes collecting devices and textbooks. Um, so maybe a Chromebook needs to be turned back in, any kind of district property that we give out. And then we make sure that your grades are up to date for your student. And when you go to your new school, they will request your students' records and we pass those on to them. Okay, so here's that poll number three question that I thought we were going to do earlier. Um, so now we've given you a bunch of information um, and we wanna see if you think you know um, what your home school will be. And if you don't, that is okay. There is an option for that as well. And it looks like we have- We have 74% who voted so far and I'll end the poll in just a minute. And we have someone from every school site, which we had last night too, which is incredible. So thank you again for taking the time to join us this evening, learn more about our school programs. All right, I'm going to share results. Great. And we do have some from every single school site. That's great. That's great. Okay, and again, if you're um, some of the, the three people that did not quite know your school site, please find our school locator and type in your address and you'll see what school site um, you would uh, turn in your packet to for elementary. At, and one clarifying question, because it's in the Q&A, um, do any of the elementaries have a choice school or is will the locator tell them which school is appropriate? Yeah, the locator will let you know. Okay. Okay, so we are actually going to turn this over now to our district nurse, Susan Hahn. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm going to start with my presentation with the structure of health services. PUSD has four full-time district nurses. We are registered nurses with a school health services credential. On the right side of the slide, you'll see our names our email addresses and the schools were assigned to. The district nurses are not stationed at the school sites. We cover the entire district, including middle and high schools. But we do have health services assistant assigned at each elementary school for three hours a day in the health office. The health services assistants provide basic first aid and act as a liaison between schools and district nurses. Um, the best way to contact a district nurse is by email. You could also um, contact us through the health service assistant. Next slide. For the purpose of the school enrollment, I'll focus my presentation on immunization and health form requirements. Um, proof of immunization for school entry is required by California law. It must be provided to the school on or before the first day of school in order for your child to participate. This is the list of vaccines and the doses. So DTP, polio, hepatitis B, MMR, varicella. Uh, during the enrollment period, health assistants will review your child's immunization records for completion. The district nurse assigned at your child's school will be contacted if any questions come up. Uh, we understand um, there will be exceptions in special situations. We'll look at those situations individually. For example, if your child was born in a foreign country, the immunization schedule may be different. Um, but don't worry, we will work with you in the next few months to make sure your child gets caught up. And for the details of the immunization information, you can check shotsforschool.org website or speak to your child's pediatrician. Or if you have any particular questions for school, you can also email the district nurse. Please provide a copy of your child's immunization record in the enrollment packet. Handwritten records must be legible, signed and stamped. Foreign records must be translated into English personal belief and or religious belief waivers are no longer accepted by the state. Uh, for medical exemptions, please contact your pediatrician and follow the procedure set forth by the new California immunization law. This is a website, it's on CARE-ME. This is a new law just took effect in January this year. 
Um, so please work with your pediatrician if you have any questions, or you can get on the website and take a look at the specific information. Acceptable immunization proof includes any of the following. You could give us a copy of a physician office printout, a copy of the yellow immunization card, a CARE printout, CARE stands for California Immunization Registry, uh, or we also accept the immunization record uh, transferred uh, from the previous school, if it's a preschool, and that school has the official legal uh, immunization record that is issued by the state. Um, so we just want to make sure that it's official and it's issued by the state. I'll show you a few examples in the next few slides. First example is the yellow immunization card. Um, I just want to emphasize here that the front of the card must have the first and last name of your child and the birthday of your child. Sometimes if a card is issued in the newborn nursery, it may only has mother's last name. So we want you to make sure that you change it to your child's name. Um, vaccine given dates must be legible and signed or stamped by the doctor's office or a clinic. The next slide shows the backside of the yellow immunization card. Again, it must have your child's name and birthday. Depending on the version of the uh, yellow immunization card you have, um, sometimes it's on the top of the, the, the backside of the card or is on the side but just make sure that you put name and birthday on the front side and the back side of the, the yellow card. Next, next example is a, a printout from Kaiser. Um, again, uh, first and last name and birthday must be on the form. If you print the immunization record in the patient medical record portal, make sure you're in the right place. Some areas may not have your child's birthday on the printout. So just make sure, you know, take a look before you submit it to us. On the right side, the example shows the preferred format. It lists each vaccine and the dates given. So this format gives us a really clear picture so we can easily count how many doses being given um, and, and let you know if it's completed or not. The next page shows the example of Palo Alto Medical Foundation, very similar to Kaiser. So in summary, next slide, please. In summary, um, we would want you to include a clear copy of the current vaccine record in the enrollment packet, even if your child still needs to get the kindergarten shots. Just give us what you have and keep sending us the updates. If you use cell phone to take a picture of the records, make sure the image is clear and legible. Um, just want to emphasize that your child will be allowed, uh, allowed to enroll in school with missing immunization or immunization records, but your child will not be allowed to attend school with missing immunization or immunization records. Um, Susan, quick question that was in the Q&A. Um, I said we would answer it live. For students who are entering into TK, do they still have the same immunization requirements as students entering into kindergarten? Very good question. Yes, the requirement is the same. I understand some um, you know, TKers birthdays uh, are late, but there is a range of um, time that you can give the kindergarten shots. Um, so yes, TK's requirements exactly the same with kindergarten. Great, thank you. Next slide. Oh, I'm going a little too fast. Hold on. There you go. So please let a district nurse know if your child has any health needs, including food allergies or any other chronic health conditions. Your child's health and safety is important to us. The information can help us develop a health plan or train our staff if necessary. And we want you to fill out the health conditions section in the enrollment form. Like Kathleen mentioned earlier, there's one section where it asks you to indicate if your child has any health conditions. And when online registration starts in fall, make sure you also fill it out on the online registration form as well. 
that information would be directly reflected on our student um, information system where the teacher can see what condition you might, your child might have and the staff can, you know, we could put up a plan together. Um, so yeah, make sure that you do pay attention to the registration form as well in terms of medical condition and medications taken in school. Talking about medication, I just want to put a quick note here on medication management in school. Permission is needed from your child's healthcare provider and parent guardian to administer any medication at school. This applies to prescription and over-the-counter medications such as EpiPens, diabetes medications, asthma, Tylenol, or any other over-the-counter medicines. So the next two slides, I'm going to review the health form required during kindergarten. Um, these forms are not required for kindergarten enrollment. However, they will be collected by the school during kindergarten year, according to the California law. And these forms are not required for TKers. So please submit these forms as soon as you can. The first form, sorry, Shay. I have a good question because that's what it was. They were wondering where they got the forms. Thank you. So the first form is a report for health examination for school entry. This is due by the first day of first grade. The first grade physical is valid 18 months prior to the first day of first grade. In another, in another word, six months prior to the first day of kindergarten. Um, like Kathleen said, the first day of school has not been set yet. Um, so just to be safe, make sure the form is signed after March 1st, 2021. Uh, it must be signed and dated by the healthcare provider and parents and guardian when submitting it to the school health office. You may want to find out why we're giving you this form right now, um, because what we notice is that um, even though you have the entire year to work on it, it's just really convenient for you to bring the form with you when your child get the kindergarten shots, you know, just one stop shop, have the doctor fill it out and bring it back to us. Um, otherwise, I know some medical offices will charge a uh, fee for them to fill out the form. I understand the Palo Alto Medical Foundation, if you bring it to the physical, they will just fill it out for you and, and return it back without a fee. But if you do it in a separate occasion, they may charge you. Um, again, we just want to give you plenty of time to work on it. The next form is an oral health form. It's due May 31st, 2022. It is the last day of kindergarten. Oral health exam is valid 12 months before the first day of school. We collect in kindergarten, not in TK. Um, all these forms are required by California law just to make sure your child gets a health exam and oral health evaluation. Um, so yeah, if you could just start working on it right now with the dentist, with the pediatrician, uh, it'll be great. Um, this is my last slide. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, Susan, if you can, there may be a question or two in the chat that I didn't get to. Um, so if you see them, please go ahead and type in some responses. Um, Shay, it looks like uh, Gerardo or Soraya are not here this evening for the Spanish dual immersion program. Would you mind covering their slides? I sure will. So we have a special program that is housed at our Valley View Elementary School. It is open for all students um, who are in our district. Um, so the first thing is if you're interested in the Spanish dual immersion program, you're going to want to, and they, we had one already, but it was an informational night on January 27th. The slide deck is included there so that you can learn more if you were not able to go to that program. Another way is you can reach out to the principal and vice principal. Um, Soraya Villasenor is our principal and Gerardo Guzman is our vice principal. Now, if you are interested in the program, you're going to register at your home school and you will fill out a request for the dual immersion and an open enrollment form. 
if you are not in the Valley View area. And just a little bit about the program. Um, it is taught both in Spanish and English. And as the students move from kindergarten through fifth grade, it starts in kindergarten, not TK. Um, the majority of the language in kindergarten, moving up to first and second, is in Spanish. Um, and not English. And then as you move up the grade levels, it gets more balanced between Spanish and English. Um, please know that all students are welcome to apply. And often we have students who by the time they're in fifth grade are trilingual. So not only um, do they know their own native language and English, they also have learned the new um, language of Spanish. All right, so there is a priorities and a lottery because sometimes um, we do have more people who are interested in the program than we have space. So our first priority is Spanish speakers as determined by a Spanish proficiency test given by the Valley View staff. Our second priority is students in POSD attendance areas with a sibling currently in the DI program. Our third priority is students who reside within the attendance boundaries of the Pleasanton Unified School District. Um, this is a highly sought after program and we do sometimes have students who are outside of Pleasanton who want to join. However, residents within Pleasanton are, have the first priority. Um, fourth priority is then the students who reside outside the attendance boundaries of Pleasanton Unified. Um, now, the lottery, their available spaces are filled according to the above priorities. In the event that requests the enrollment exceed available space, we conduct a lottery so that it's fair and consistent. And then based on the lottery, a prioritized list will be established. Um, students are assigned to staff, all staff that teach in the dual immersion program have their B clad and they're bilingual in Spanish and English. And they also infuse um, Spanish culture within to the program and they learn about the culture and about the countries that speak Spanish. And I, th I think we actually have Gerardo, um, our vice principal, he might be in the attendees right now. Yeah, he's Catholic. on the wrong link. I just sent him the new one. So I think he was going to try to pop in and say hello really quick, Shay. Okay. Um, I, I would encourage you to reach out. If you are interested in this program, please reach out to um, the principal via senior or vice principal Guzman. Um, they would welcome to answer any of your questions, give you more information so that you can make an informed decision if this is the right path for your child. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to Kids Club and let Tracy take over. Hi everyone, my name is Tracy Peterson and I'm the program director for Kids Club, before and after school programs, the STEAM Preschool and also the Horizon Early Education Center. And what I am going to share with you is not gonna be information that everyone needs, but I do have a little tidbit for you that's very interesting. I would like you to know that if your child is starting kindergarten in 2021, they will be graduating in the year 2034. So if you can imagine them cheering in the stands when they're seniors saying 34, 34, that's what they're gonna be saying. So the district administers kids club programs at eight of our nine elementary schools. And if your child will be going to Walnut Grove Elementary School, they, are, um, they have a program there called EDCC, and it's a private program, and you can contact them for their information. I'll just be talking about Kids Club tonight. Next slide, please, Shay. Before COVID, the Kids Club program operated seven to six every day, including summer vacations, teacher work days. Um, our holiday schedule is located on our website, and we have adjusted our schedule this year to a full day schedule due to COVID and we have accommodated distance learning. So the previous month, monthly fee for Kids Club was $600 for kindergartners and $500 for first through fifth grade per month. There's a one-time $100 registration fee and a $200 materials fee. Uh, our current fees are higher because we have a full day program instead of just before and after school. 
And if we go into hybrid, our fees and hours will change again. We've just been really trying hard to serve all of our families in any way that we can. So what's included in our monthly fees? Well, we have amazing staff and we're very proud of our staff longevity. We have two site supervisors that have been with us for over 25 years. And we have many teachers that have been with us for 10 to 15 years. Kids Club offers homework time, different activities in various areas of the curriculum. We have a STEM team that meets and plans STEM activities for every Kids Club site. We offer snacks every day. We go on field trips in the summer. We have amazing theme days and we help our students with character development and also community service projects by interacting with each other, the school, the staff and the community. Next slide, please. Tracy, real quick, we have a question from the audience. Can TK students attend Kids Club? Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kids Club is TK through fifth grade, so absolutely. And if you're interested in signing up for Kids Club, we do have a lottery process. So you're gonna to go to our website, which is linked in here, complete the online Google form by March 19th to be eligible for the lottery. If you don't complete it, you'll be placed on a waiting list. Even if you're not sure, but you think you might need it, I encourage you to fill out the form because no harm, no foul, if you get a spot and turn the spot down. After March 19th, we send all of the entries to our PUSD Technology Services Department, and they do a random sort for us, and that is how we get um, our, en our enrollment list for that year. Please note, we will be sending an email to all families on Friday, April 16th, and we may be placing all families on the wait list depending on what the COVID situation looks like. Generally, students are given a, a spot in Kids Club. They start the first day of summer because our fifth grade students have to leave the program. And like I said, it's just going to depend on the, the guidance from Alameda County Public Health Department. Right now, we have a very small group size of 14 um, per classroom. So it's going to depend on how many students we're allowed to have in a room, how much space we have, and that kind of thing. A student is only eligible for Kids Club when they're enrolled at the school with the Correlating Kids Club program. And just a word about open enrollment. Uh, we discourage open enrollment for if you really wanna get into Kids Club because acceptance at one Kids Club site does not transfer to another. Similar to the way the district prioritizes open enrollment with the school, the residents in, in that area have first priority. So if you get accepted into Hearst Kids Club and you want to go to Vintage Hills, your, your acceptance to her, Kids Club does not go to Vintage Hills. You go to the bottom of the wait list if you go to Vintage Hills. And I can help you explain that to you or any of the site supervisors can help explain that to you as well. Next slide, please. Uh, Tracy, I'm gonna interrupt one more time. Um, a question in the Q&A, can students with special needs attend Kids Club? Absolutely, yes. We have many, many students with special needs and um, we work with their teachers, we work with the families, some of our staff attend IEPs and whatever we can do to support our students, that's what we are here for. Great, and final question answering live. Um, if care is not needed five days a week, but maybe only three days a week, um, do we offer part-time care? We do not offer part-time care. Thank you, Kathleen, that's a great question. Mostly because we have waiting lists at most of our sites. So parents are welcome to pay for the full fee for the month and attend and use it as they would like. So if you only need it three days a week, you can attend three days a week. But if you need it the other days, it's also there for you. And this is what our website looks like. You can see the link to the online lottery registration form. And the lottery letter is going to cover a lot of the information that I've talked about tonight. Last slide, please, Shane. So what do you do if you can't get into one of our programs? Well, we do have a local resource and referral agency called Hively that can help provide other alternatives. They can also help um, assist with financial aid if a family is in need of that. And um, they have programs availability for all over the Pleasanton area. They can make referrals to you. They can send other, you to other sites or other home-based childcare centers. And um, they're just a great support to our families. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact me directly, or you can talk to the site supervisors at the specific, specific school site where your child will be attending. Thank you so much. 
Great. Thank you, Tracy. Great information. And thank you for answering some of those live questions. Okay. We have Steve McCoy Thompson from Pleasanton Partnerships and Education, our PPIE Foundation. He's here to share more about PPIE and he does some great um, humble brags for us in Pleasanton. So Steve. Great. Thank you. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, Great. tonight audio yeah. and video is working. So. Yeah, yesterday had technical problems. So yeah, so hi, my name is Steve McCoy Thompson. I'm the executive director of PPIE. And uh, before this, I used to do international consulting. And so I've lived in India and China and West Africa. And so I know how challenging it is to enter any, any new environment. And so I just want you to uh, take a deep breath and you go to the next slide and relax a little bit and know that you are in a fantastic school district. There's a website which you might want to check out called niche.com, N-I-C-H-E.com, and they rank all the schools all over the country. And our school district is top notch. And so uh, your children will be well taken care of. The only thing you need to do really is ask uh, and somebody will be there to help you. Uh, so next slide. Uh, PPIE, what we do is we've been around for about 30 years. We're a foundation and we raise supplemental, uh, we ra get supplemental funds to pay for staff at our schools. And we partner with PTA and they fund mostly stuff, but it all goes into the classroom. And so we will ask you to consider making a donation to PPIE to help fund things like intervention specialists, which help our kids at all levels with reading and sometimes math. We provide extra hours for libraries to keep them open when we're back at school uh, during lunch and recess or extra tech hours to make our distance learning work well. We fund support counselors, we fund STEM grants, and we fund, all, we fund uh, bus, buses for outdoor ed for fifth graders. So it's really a huge range of programs. And we partner with the PTAs. And so both groups are gonna be asking you to support them. Uh, when you register your child, uh, there'll be a thing called Future Fund and that's where you make that choice. And if you have to make a, a choice between the two, join PTA. It's a great organization. And it's a really good way to get involved. Uh, you can also go to our website at ppie.org and see some information here on the screen about how schools are funded. Where do your tax dollars go? How, do our, how are our schools, how do they compare with other school districts in terms of funding levels? There's a lot of information about where, uh, where your funds go. We ask you to vote actually and tell us what kind of staff you want us to fund at your school. And we go out and we supplement those funds with uh, uh, corporate funds. And so we're able to give more money back to our schools than we receive from our parents. And we also have, um, if you want to go to the next slide, uh, an annual event, which I, uh, well, actually this is about our funding. And we typically ask for $350 per student, and uh, which is a lot less than other school districts, which will often ask for like $1,000 a student. So we're a great deal. And this kind of gives you a sense of the kind of uh, programs that we fund. Um, and one uh, shout out I want to give is, if you go to the next slide, is about our annual run. And we, uh, every year, this will be our ninth annual run, and we uh, gather about 3,000 people for a run in the community. And it's just a super fun carnival style event. This year, as you might imagine, we're going to do a virtual race. And as you register, uh, you will log your miles, whether you run or walk or hike or bicycle. And we will collectively, as a community, race around the world. And you'll get postcards from uh, different countries to celebrate that. So go to our website or you can at ppie.org. There'll be a button to go to, the, to register for the run. You'll get a shirt that looks like this. See, isn't that great? Beautiful. You'll love it. And if you wear that shirt downtown during race week, you're going to get a 10% discount at certain vendors. We're also doing drawings for things like Apple earbuds and $100 gift certificates for tutoring. I mean, it's awesome. So go there. 
uh, register and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, around town and look forward to seeing you next year at these wonderful schools. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you so much, Steve. And I will also plug that run. It is really, really fun event. Um, we participate every year and we have a really great time with our family. So um, the shirts look amazing this year. Apple AirPods are all the rage. So I think it's definitely <laughs> worth signing up for um, and enjoying a good time together. So I know we're a little bit over on time, but we do have just a few final slides. Um, so we're going to welcome Isela to talk a little bit about our School Smarts Parent Engagement Program. So Isela. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Rosa Isela. Uh, thank you, Kathleen. And um, well, I, I'm a member of this community. I have three kids. Uh, the three of them, they went through the dual immersion program two at Valley View and uh, I'm a truly believer so it's a fantastic program. Uh, and I'm here tonight. I'm a parent liaison also assigned to Valley View for those parents who I, uh, we will see hopefully in next fall. And I'm here to talk about the School Smarts, which is a, a research-based parent engagement program funded with support from William and Flora Hewlett Foundation to California PTA. And uh, you know, research shows that parent engagement in education improves the student success. The program started as a pilot in 2010 at Valley View, and it has been offered successfully in PUGSD for eight years now. The curriculum was written by, communications, uh, by a communications firm, but it is based on research by Karen Mapp and Joyce Eifstein, We are two leading family engagement researchers in our country. The program offers a seven sessions parent academy that trains and empowers parents. Topics include understanding the education system, communicating effectively, advocating for a quality education, and the importance of parent involvement. Um, uh, Pleasanton has graduated 800 parents uh, who have impacted hundreds of students and their families. Many of us grew up in different countries and states, and even those who grew up here know the school system changes constantly. And this is a great opportunity to learn about your school, ask questions about different services, programs, and opportunities that you can access now and at every level, including an overview information about high school and college. Many of the graduates uh, have continued its commitment with School Smarts by enrolling as facilitators. So your principal and the planning teams have been working a valuable program experience for you with different specialists to cover and present the curriculum, including sessions with our amazing leaders from the governance team to talk about the roles and also celebrate graduation with you at the completion of the School Smarts Academy. So when the time comes, ask your school about the School Smarts. We have seven different academies happening uh, this school year and two will start actually next week. Please feel free to call me if you have any question and have a great night, everyone. Great, thank you so much, Isela. That is a really great program. Um, so we definitely encourage parents to sign up and participate. You will learn an awful lot about schools and school districts. So, um, and there's usually some phenomenal guest presenters too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so final tips for a successful school year. Um, so uh, one of the questions I wanted to answer live is there was a question about reopening for um, this year and for next year. So if you want more information about our reopening plans um, for hybrid learning in-person instruction, please visit our website. Um, we have a whole page dedicated to the details and that are outlined um, on there. And also it is being discussed again tomorrow night at the board meeting. So in case you haven't ever viewed one of our board meetings, um, you can go to our district website and <laughs> kind of go under um, the tab about Board of Trustees and look at our board meeting links and you can watch live um, as well there and um, follow all of the up-to-date information. Kathleen, so there was two questions I think you'll be able to answer really um, quickly. Sure. First one, if they open enroll as a TK or do they need to, re does that open enrollment continue or do they need to reopen enroll in kindergarten? We typically try to approve those open enrollments for the level. Um, so usually it will last for elementary. 
Excellent. And then the next question is, if they already have children uh, in queue, do they use their existing queue login to begin the enrollment process? Yes, I think you can use your current parent login and then just create a new profile for that student. So you make a new student enrollment for that student. Okay. Great Thank questions. You. Thank you, Shay. <laughs> Um, so <clears throat> with the return to hybrid and in-person learning, just please be prepared to follow all recent health and safety protocols as shared by your school site. Um, make sure that you label all clothing, backpacks, and lunch boxes um, when the time comes. You want to make sure you develop healthy nighttime routines and bedtimes that allow for plenty of rest. Um, having places where they can do their homework in a comfortable area, kind of a designated spot. Um, packing small healthy snacks and reminding your child not to share food. We do have quite a few students with allergies. Um, and maintaining positive, respectful communication with all staff, students, and parents. We are all here to help. We have phenomenal teachers, staff, counselors, social workers, parent liaisons. Everyone's here to help you um, and answer your questions. So please ask for help when you need it. And... I think that is leading us to the end here, Shay, on our next slide. All right. Um, the final piece of information, this is also on our website as you go through the new student orientation is to fill out the questionnaire um, for preschool if, you, uh, if your child went to preschool or not. So please complete that short, short survey. I think it's only one question. And next slide. Here's all of our contact information. Um, Susan Hahn's contact information as our district nurse was on the previous slides under health services along with every nurse, um, all of our district nurses, um, their contact information for the elementary sites they oversee is listed on that slide as well. Um, so if you have questions about the DI program, um, please contact Gerardo or Soraya. They're happy to answer any questions you may have about the DI program. It is also a phenomenal program. Um, and their staff do an outstanding job with all of our DI students. Okay, with that, I know we are over time. We tried our best to answer all of the questions um, that kind of popped up into the chat, um, either live, privately, or um, kind of back in the Q&A. We will take these questions and take any frequently asked questions and put them onto our FAQ document as well. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. We really enjoyed presenting this information to you. Please go enroll and register, complete those packets before the end of February. So thanks so much. We look forward to seeing your students next year. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Excellent job, everyone. We're still live. So I would probably, should I just go ahead and end it? Great Thank job. You. Great, Great job. job. Have a good